Hey there lads and ladies, it is Petrifying Pumpkins here, back with another Firewall Zero Hour update. This time we've got a massive one, as Firewall Operation Nightfall was just recently teased by First Contact Entertainment over on their YouTube channel during a live developer stream, hosted by Firewall Frank himself. So in this video, we are going to go over everything we know about Operation Nightfall so far and we are going to speculate on some things that have raised my eyebrow and got me feeling very moist. So let's not waste any more time and let's jump right in. So the first thing you'll notice is the new loading screen here. It's got a new redesign, a new color scheme. It puts Operation Nightfall front and center. So what we can gather from this is that this isn't just another DLC content drop like we've been getting until now. This is more like an expansion or maybe even Firewall 2.0 as I've seen people mention. Something along those lines. Basically this is big and we can see how much has changed once Frank loads into the lobby area. Not only has the UI been drastically redesigned into something that looks much sleeker than what we have now, but the actual lobby area itself has changed. You're not in the shoot house map anymore, you'll be in the brand new hangar map which was previously teased and we'll talk a bit more about that later. For right now, let's take a closer look at the new UI. I'm going to break the new menu down piece by piece starting at the very top left. You'll see a metal cog shape which is very likely to be the settings menu. Just to the right of that then is what appears to be an eye in a white circle which I am assuming is an information icon. Now I'm not sure exactly what will happen when you click on this but it's probably safe to say it will give you information about some aspect of the game. Maybe it will explain the rules of the currently selected mode or something like that. Now to the right of that then we have a tab that says updates. Now this could be a few things. It could be a place where First Contact Entertainment can display a message to the players, letting them know about updates or patch notes or maybe scheduled maintenance or something along those lines. You'll be familiar with that type of thing if you play online games often, I'm sure. To the right of that then, we have a Daily Tasks tab, which I'm very happy to see. So if you don't know what Daily Tasks are, they are essentially a list of objectives for you to complete within 24 hours. Doing so will net you some kind of reward. These tasks tend to be things like, you know, get 15 kills with the Desert Eagle or maybe hack the laptop three times, stuff like that. They're little things. But the best part is they kind of force you to maybe play in a way that you wouldn't normally. So you try out new weapons and equipment and it'll just add a bit of variety, a bit of spice to the game. The question is, what will be the reward for completing these challenges? It's safe to say you'll probably get XP and crypto. But for the level 50 players who already have everything, it would be nice if we see a little something extra and I'll talk a bit more about that later on in the video. Now moving down and to the left we see a large panel that shows the artwork for the Nightfall DLC. We see a portrait of the new contractor Ruby who was previously teased but not revealed until right now. And she's standing in the new hangar map in front of a cargo plane fuselage or something along those lines. If you missed it last time around, Ruby's embedded skill is called Thief and it allows her to hack into dead enemies wrist tablets and extract crypto. Now it's going to be interesting to see how much crypto that you can actually nest if you do that and if it actually removes that amount from the enemy's bank account, which I hope it does just for the lols, you know. Now if we move down under the panel, we see a very intriguing progress bar that is currently sitting at 13% and that bar itself is simply labelled Nightfall. So what could this bar represent? Could it be a community challenge that requires the player base to score a certain amount of kills or wins in order to fill the bar? And if so, what happens when the bar hits 100%? Could it be representing new trophies added to the game and the player's progress with unlocking them? Could it be tracking a daily task of some kind? I've got no idea, but that bar does have me moist. I'd love to hear what you lads and ladies think. That might be in the comments below. Now directly beneath that progress bar then, we see a panel that is advertising the PlayStation Store. It's safe to assume that clicking on that will open up the PlayStation Store for easy access to purchasable cosmetics. If we move to the right a bit, we can see some player stats. Now the level badge is there as usual, but it appears larger now, it's more front and center. But directly beneath that badge, you can see your progress towards your next level. 
Now if you look closely here, you can see that Frank is already level 50 and he has earned 1,065,000 XP. So he has actually passed the threshold needed to hit 50. So I'm going to take this to mean that Operation Nightfall will not increase the player level cap. Otherwise, we'd see him progressing towards level 51 right now. Now, it's possible I'm wrong and that they're hiding this or they haven't finished this and it's not, it'll be there in release, but not right now. But until I see otherwise, it looks like the level cap is going to remain 50 for now. Directly beneath that, we see the player's total crypto and total XP, but underneath those is something brand new. There appears to be a new type of currency or collectible there. Now, I'm not sure what that icon is, but it looks to me like maybe a USB stick or maybe a grenade. Chime in below if you think you know what that icon is. Right now, whatever it is, Frank has zero of us. Now this brings me back to the daily tasks. Could it be possible that completing daily tasks will reward us with this new type of currency? And that this new type of currency could then be used to unlock some cool stuff like maybe fancy camouflage or weapon skins or something along those lines. Or is it something else entirely? Again, let me know your ideas on what you think that might be. It's one of the more interesting items on show here and it's got me feeling a bit moist with the possibilities. You know, right now I'm not going to lie, I'm sulking. So let's move over to the right side of the new menu now. Now starting with the top right corner, you can see Frank's avatar, the little Astrobot dude. And beside that, there is a plus button, which appears to be the squad invite button. We'll talk a little bit more about the invites and squad building in a bit. For now, let's move down to the tabs running along just below us. There are five tabs displayed here, and they are Mode, Loadout, Contractor, Operation, and Leaderboard. Frank currently has the Mode tab selected, and we can see that Below this displays the three modes available below. Now, these modes are the same that we already have. These are tutorial, training and contracts. Now as Frank hovers over training and contracts, we see a drop down menu briefly appear that will let you choose between solo, private and public. Very sleek indeed. Next Frank selects the contractor tab which of course allows you to select your contractor. Now the difference here though is that each contractor has been given their own nice looking character portraits. Four contractors are displayed per page and you turn the pages by hitting the arrows on the sides of the character panel. Frank selects the new contractor Ruby and we see that as he hovers over her, the icons for the skills that are equipped to her appear over her portraits. So in this case, she has the embedded thief skill and the scout skill equipped. Two more icons then seem to appear after he selects Ruby. One of them is a cross shape or maybe a plus shape and the other looks like an edit icon. Now I'm not sure what that cross shape does but I'm going to assume that the icon that looks like an editing icon will allow you to edit your contractor's skills and appearance. Doing this in the lobby menu is something that firewall players have been crying out for since day one, so that is such a nice quality of life improvement right there if that's the case. Next up, Frank selects the loadout tab and we see the new weapon for the first time. It's called a Raptor and it's a submachine gun that seems to be based on the real life UMP-45 or perhaps an MP p5k as was pointed out to me during the live stream yesterday now i've looked up both weapons i'm leaning towards the ump 45 based on the shape of the magazine the mp5k seems to have a bit of a curve on us whereas the ump is pretty straight looking but I'm no gun expert, so if you know better, then let me know down below. One thing I also noticed, or rather didn't notice, was that I couldn't tell if they added more custom loadout slots or not, so that's kind of still up in the air right now. Next then, Frank receives an invitation from Demo1, and we can see that when he goes to check it out, he can see all the other players in that lobby beforehand. Now, I'm usually the one who sends out the invites when it comes to Firewall, so you guys will have to let me know if that's the same way it's always been, or has the invite system been improved. Anyway, Frank accepts the invite and is loaded into the new lobby and there are some changes from the first lobby. At the top of the menu we can see that he's now in a private PvP lobby, so private contracts basically. And on the far left panel we see a list of all the connected players along with new icons beside each person's name. There's either a shield icon or a sword icon, which represents whether or not they're on the defending team or the attacking team. Frank then looks to his left and we can see his teammates are in the middle of loading in. Now if you look over their heads, you'll see that the icons that represent your teammates loadouts have been updated. 
They are no longer white silhouettes, they are now detailed images of the actual weapons and equipment that you'll be using. Now, these small touches really make the game look a bit more polished in my opinion. Back on the right side of the menu again, there are still two tabs that Frank hasn't selected. Now the one on the end is the leaderboard tab and that should be self-explanatory, but then we have this one here called Operation. And this one has me scratching my head. Now remember, this update is called Operation Nightfall. So if we pick this tab, will we see Operation Nightfall listed there and with potential spaces for future operations? If so, what would happen if we picked a different operation? Could it be a playlist of certain maps, for example, maybe Middle Eastern maps, UK maps or Russian maps in their own playlists? I truly have no idea on this one, so I'll be needing you lads and ladies to give me your thoughts on this one down below. Moving on, we see that the two Texas teammates have loaded in on Frank's menu. And I know some of you folks out there have noticed this, their character models are doing a default animation rather than actually tracking and mimicking what the teammate is doing in real life. And I see some of you thinking that they've removed that. I just want to say that you could very well be right about that, but I suspect that because this is an in-house developer build of the game, that not all things that we see here are going to be representative of what we see in the consumer version. There may be no point in having this in the developer version. Now that's just a guess on my part, but I just don't see them taking us away or I can't even think of any reason why they would take it away. Next, Frank looks to his right side where we see Ruby for the first time in the flesh. She kind of looks like she's wearing a leather jacket or something and it kind of fits in with her skill of being a thief as she has this kind of cat burglar look going on. Now after this, Frank loads into the compound map and as soon as he spawns in, he opens up the in-game menu and we get a look at the new UI style for that menu. He then proceeds to move over to the right side of the map and we see a huge change here. So instead of the big wide open space that you'd be used to on the compound map, now we have a bunch of tents and other large objects like sonar panels and crates and stuff like that. This creates loads more cover on that section of the map which should change up some of the dynamics on the compound map. This is on top of the new spawn locations that we already knew were coming for both compound and the bunker map too, which they show off a little bit later on. We also see here that the red enemy player names are gone. Instead, they've been replaced by the red arrows or red chevrons if you, if you prefer. We saw these in the last tease stream, but in case you missed that, there you go. So then after the match ends, we get a quick look at the after match summary, as a new summary tab appears alongside the other five. Now the scoreboard is incorporated into the new menu rather than being its own separate page like it is now. We see how the attackers and defenders fared on the left side of this summary space, and on the right we see a large panel which is empty and that's titled Earnings. Now then to the right of that, there is another smaller panel, also titled Earnings, and this one shows you how much XP and crypto you've earned in that match. So it's going to be interesting to see what that first earning panels will display. Finally, on the bottom right of the summary space, we see an Unlocks panel. And all of these are empty, of course, as we all know. You don't earn anything for playing in private matches, so we're not going to see anything there. Next, Frank picks the new Maps tab that appeared above and replace the modes tab from the previous menu. Now this tab shows a large portrait of the map and the host then selects the brand new hangar map and we see for the first time that the hangar map takes place in the UK. Now this brings the total number of UK maps to four and it's interesting that both the map and the new contractor are both from the UK. Now I don't want to talk too much about the new map hangar because we already covered this in a previous video and the gameplay kind of speaks for itself really, so if you want to watch all this, I'll have the link in the description that you can check it out for yourself. All I'll say about Hangar is that it's the first daytime map, which is actually kind of ironic considering it's coming with Operation Nightfall. It's quite large, it has interiors and exteriors, and it also has a cool sky bridge. Next we see the devs go to the bunker map, and we see a new spawn location here, which is right in the middle area behind the caged fence area, and I hope this replaces the current middle area laptop spawn on this map because that is hard as hell to defend now there's not much else to talk about on this map that i could see and then for the rest of the, you know that's kind of all there is to talk about in terms of what we were shown that i could see anyway now there's a lot of questions raised after all of this like when will operation nightfall actually release will it be free or will it be paid or will it be some of it free like the maps and the guns and some of it paid like ruby and cosmetics like it has been all along is this the first operation of many 
Will this update include a bunch of much requested fixes too? Stuff like, you know, stuff like that. Now keep in mind, this was just a 20 minute tease. Frank never actually addressed all the stuff we were seeing on the screen. They're basically putting on the nipple clamps right on us, you know, clamping them on nice and tight, giving, giving them a twist and, you know, just daring us to say the safe word, but, you know, we're not going to. Not going to, not yet. Now, I was restreaming this live when it was shown and some of the First Contact Entertainment devs popped into the chat, including Hess Barber himself, and he made a comment that we'd learn more concrete info about this update in a few sleeps. So it sounds like days rather than weeks going by what he said. But you know Hess, he likes to keep things vague, so of course take that with some salt. And that's about it for this video, lads and ladies. Get in that comment section and let me know what you think all about this and share your theories and your speculations and all that good stuff. Now before I end this video, let me give a quick thank you to my Patreon supporters. I know I haven't been as active on this channel lately thanks to becoming a dad, so feel free to cancel your Patreons until the channel is back on its face if you would like. I wouldn't mind that at all, don't feel guilty or whatever. And again, thank you very much. Now if you want to help me out in other ways, then please consider doing all that usual shite with the likes and the shares and all that. And I'll see you in the next one, so bye for now.